This light costs 90 bucks. This guy, the light panels Gemini, that one's closer to $2,000. I think it's on sale for about $1,600. The one in this bag costs, after you include the power accessories in the bag itself, that one's gonna cost like $4,500. So, when someone asks me what light they should buy, my first question is usually, what's your budget? So you should watch this video because I'm gonna go through a series of pricing tiers to tell you what light I think you should buy within those ranges. So we're gonna cover the entire gamut uh, based on my own experience of reviewing and playing with lights. And you should also watch this video through to the end because it was sponsored by Artlist and I'm not just gonna sit here and do an ad read. Instead, I'm gonna play music from Artlist and every song that plays, I'm going to display it on the bottom every time the song changes. So if you don't use Artlist, you know which ones to look for as soon as you sign up. And if you do use Artlist, well then you can just go find them. Also at the end of the video, Artlist is offering something now for current members and new members through December. And they do it every December, so they have a special little package for people signing up around this time. So anyways, let's get on with the show. So for the zero to $100 range, I recommend the Aperture MC. Now, there are other lights that are more affordable, like this little Nan Light Lido Light 5C, which I really like, and it's directional. But this light has become more valuable over time as Aperture has added new lights to their lineup. And because the way it works with Citus Link, you can control all of your professional larger lights with the tiny little pocket lights. And then they sell them in these little tiny pocket cases, uh, which, you know, you can recharge all the lights at the same time. So if, you, if you're just starting out and you're getting some lights for accent lights or something like that, you can start off with this little $90 light and use that as a, as a very dim key light. It's not a great key light, let's be honest, uh, unless you have some really fast glass or a Sony a7S III and you crank up the ISO and use it like that. But this little light is really useful as an accent light, as a first foray into trying to play with lights. And then as your kit grows, it becomes more valuable. That's why I recommend the MC for 90 bucks. The runner up would be the Nanlite Pavotube 6C Mark II. I really like this one because it's really bright. It's, uh, it, it's already a soft light because it's pretty long. And this one is also magnetic. As you can see, it's got these little clips on here. It comes with these little clips so you can gaff tape these little clips onto a wall. And then you can stick this to those gaff taped little things on the wall. It's also built like a tank. It's quite nice. So if you're not using any of Aperture's lights and you don't ever intend on buying any of them or using Citus Link, the runner-up would take the win, Nanlite Pavotube 26C. And these are both full color lights. So they have all the colors in the spectrum. You can do you know, red, green, blue, purple, whatever you want. And the reason I don't really recommend lights below $90, like those little cheap panels you see all over Amazon, like from newer, is because generally they overdrive those LEDs and they claim really high lux numbers and brightness. And then after about 15 minutes of leaving them on at 100% power, the intensity, it just, it burns the LEDs and they like start casting this green tint. And they're very low quality, they fall apart, and I, I just don't recommend them for that reason. Because it's, uh, they might seem like a great cheap light, but that's all they are, they're just cheap lights. Uh, and before we get too far into this, I recommend, if you're wondering how much you should spend on lights, I think that everyone should spend at least as much as their camera and lens system combined onto lighting before you further invest into a new camera or upgrade your camera if you're just trying to improve your image quality. Because your camera has a sensor, right? That sensor's only job is to record light. Why don't you put the same investment into your lighting as you did into the thing that's supposed to record light? So that's my philosophy. Now let's move on to the $100 to $150 range. So for this next bracket, I think that I need to recommend the Godox SL60W. Uh, it's right now selling for about $134, or if you're watching this video during the holidays, it's usually on sale now for about $99, at least the last time I checked on uh, b &H. So $99, it would fall into the previous bracket. This is, this is like the lowest price you're gonna find for a really, truly high quality key light which uh, I could truly recommend and I've used it a lot. A lot of people still use it. Uh, the fan noise is a little bit out of control, but it's okay because you can replace the fan with a Noctua $10 fan and it makes it super duper silent. Uh, the, the newer version of the Godox SL60W, the Mark II, they have that in the 150 and the 200 watt version, but the Godox ML60 replaced the Godox SL60 and that one is about 
$270. So for the $100 to $150 range, even if you can pick them up used, you can pick them up for hundred bucks. I recommend the Godox SL60. That's a great key light. It's a bones mount light. It's daylight temperature and it's just, it's bright enough. It's, it's similar to the Aperture 120D, the Mark I version. It's got great color quality. A lot of people use it. So I recommend that light, uh, if, especially if you're just dipping your toes in lighting and you just want to get a device that puts out a high quality light. That's a great place to get started. I took some notes here. Uh, for the $150 to the $250 range, I'm going to recommend the Godox SL150W Mark II. So that one is selling for $339, but there's a holiday savings where it's $100 off right now. And I think that it might stay that price uh, moving forward, which would be awesome because right now it's $239 and it takes that price tier by far. Uh, it's got a fan button on the back that turns the fan off completely. It also cuts the brightness down about by about half. It's an extremely high quality light. It's like the Godox SL version of lights that were you know, super affordable, but they've upgraded them with all the features that everyone like myself has complained about and requested. And so that's the, that's the light that you want for that price range. So the Godox SL150 Mark II. And I, I reviewed the SL200 Mark II, which is identical, just a little bit more powerful. If you wanna go watch that video. Now we're gonna get into the 250 to the $500 range, which starts to get a little bit more interesting. So if you look around my studio and wonder, you know, you're wondering what lights I use personally for all of my videos, this one has been one of my main lights since I got it several years ago, and it's the Falcon Eyes RX818, which is a full color light that costs, I think like six or $700 now, but I really truly only ever use it in its white mode here, uh, set to 5,500 Kelvin. And that's because it's just the most convenient light to use there. Now, we're only on the 250 to the $500 tier. So in that case, I'd recommend the Falcon Eyes RX 18 TD. The Falcon Eyes RX 18 TD is essentially identical to the RX 818, except it's only bicolor. So it goes from a daylight white to a tungsten white light, which is 5,600 Kelvin to 3,000 Kelvin, somewhere in that range, but it also only costs $340 right now. Now Falcon Eyes also came out with a version two of that light called the RX18 TDX Rollflex Light 2. So, I mean, the names are a little bit out of, out of control. And this is basically the second version of that light that I would recommend. And this one costs $429. So if you want the latest version, the Mark II, which has arguably a lot better build quality, and this one is uh, waterproof down to 30 meters. I'm not exactly sure how they tested the waterproofness down to 30 meters, because I'm pretty sure the cables aren't that long and the batteries themselves can't be submerged. But you know what? It's a waterproof light. You can get it crazy wet. It'll rain on underwater, put it on the bottom of a pool, light up subjects that way. And this is probably the brightest and least expensive light that you can get with that type of rating. If you need it to be completely waterproof, then go with the this version, which is, you know, 439. But if you don't need that, then the build quality on the original RX18 TD is adequate and it's, you know, saves you a hundred bucks. The reason I really like this light for the purpose of being my, you know, overhead, you know, hair light essentially is what it is most of the time is because of the way I use it for product photography. So I stick it on one of these boom arms, which is a newer wall mount boom arm, which costs like 60 or 70 bucks. So when I need to do product photography or take pictures of stuff, watch this. Now we got a nice soft light down right on the table for whatever product photography I needed to do. Well, what's it look like, Tommy? Well, if you subscribe, I'll show you. forgot to mention. I really like the uh, Falcon Eyes Roflex light series because it's one of the cheapest lights in the category that is also able to be V-mount battery powered. And I really appreciate that because V-mount batteries are, uh, they can be way more powerful or longer lasting, have a lot more capacity. Um, and it just adds a lot of value to me personally. Um, so this is, you know, running on a tiny little V-mount battery. Look how bright this thing gets. 
I mean, it's it's pretty bright. We're not going to go into all the uh, metrics of all these lights as far as CRI, TLC. I, I do that usually. Uh, we're not doing that today. All you need to know is falconized lights are very high quality lights. Uh, they're, they're very similar to Intellitex lights, which I would consider a slightly more premium brand. So for the 500 to $1,000 range, you know how earlier I said when someone asks me what light should I buy, I say, what's your budget and what are you using it for? Well, this is kind of one of those places where we reached that crossroad of what are you using it for? Personally, one of my favorite lights and one that I've used for a very long time is the Aperture 120D Mark II. In fact, I used two of them in my studio as my key light and as my back rim light situation over here. I've got one with a soft box and then I've got one with the Fresnel and the barn doors. I highly recommend that light to anyone that wants an excellent studio light. One that just you can turn on and off really easy with these little remotes. And then you can now use the Citus bridge to connect them into the Citus Link app. Again, how I talked about the whole Aperture Citus Link ecosystem and how it's awesome to, especially if you have a whole bunch of their lights to power an entire studio. But if you already have a good key light and you need something that will add flavor to your videos, uh, something like a full color light with a full suite of RGB features, uh, special effects, or just to add a splash of color onto your backgrounds or something else. Maybe something that's slightly more compact, more portable, that can also double as another key light or as a fill light. That's when I would start taking a look at something like the Lupo Action Panel Full Color. <clears throat> They've got a kit that comes with a whole backpack. Basically everyone that's uh, that wants to start experimenting with high-end RGB fixtures, this is like the go-to tiny little fixture because one, uh, it's super compact and if you get it with the little kit with the backpack you also get the v-mount plate and if you power it with a v-mount battery I did a whole review on this light I think the output is reduced slightly if you use a v-mount battery but I never use these things at full power anyways it's a really great fixture for the size the portability the durability uh, it's got the same exact interface and firmware as their much more expensive high-end panels like this one, which is their full color 60 with lenses. This one costs $3,000. They have the exact same interface. It's the same, it's, it's essentially the same panel. Just a tiny fraction of the amount of LEDs on it and the amount of power. So you're getting the technology of a $3,000 panel and a $750 package that also fits in a backpack you can take it with you and it has their own little diffuser which, I mean, when I first got the diffuser, I thought it was like this cheap little piece of junk. Um, and I talk about this all the time, just because the way the, the material works, but it's like this translucent packing plastic almost. But when you put it on the full color, uh, the action panel full color, it's just, it's so pleasing. I do wish the diffuser had a little bit better, uh, like magnets or something to assemble it, because it's kind of a pain in the butt to put together. But once you put it together, there are screws. You can screw it into the top so it's not gonna fall off or anything. But then you have this really interesting, um, like kind of light, like a little set piece almost. Like I, I've never seen anything look quite like this. I mean, it, it just looks so cool. It looks like a, like a hologram almost in, in the camera, um, but Using, using the diffuser, if you, if you turn up the intensity, uh, you know, it, it has like a 270 degree beam angle spread. It's just a fantastic little tool. And anyone, you know, I've only seen one rating on B&H Photo and they gave it one star for some reason. I don't know why, I love this thing. I think it's, it's one of the best lights you can get for the money. That being said, if you need uh, a great key light, you know, the, the 120D Mark II, is awesome. Plus it's also got really great resale value. So if you are trying to cycle through gear and you know, maybe you upgraded or you downgraded or you just need to pay some bills or something, that's something I consider when I invest in gear is if I need to offload this gear to buy something else to, you know, maybe something else that I'm reviewing, then that's something to consider. Aperture has a higher resale value because it's popular and people know what it is. While Lupo is equally valuable people aren't searching for it because they don't know what it is. They, they haven't looked into high-end Italian lighting fixtures. So there's that to consider as well. For the $1,000 to $1,500 range, there's really only two contenders that I see competing in that bracket for the best value light. And that's gonna be the Aperture 300D Mark II or the 300X. 
Personally, I prefer the Aperture 300X because it's bicolor and I don't need the power and the output of the 300D Mark II, which gets approximately twice as bright as the 300X in daylight mode. Uh, the 300X can get almost as bright as the 300D Mark II if you set it down to maximum output mode and you set it at 4500 degrees Kelvin. So you can still achieve close to the maximum output of the 300D Mark II. Plus, the in inside the reflector of the 300X, it's got these little bubbles that merge all the, the bicolor chips. So it's one of the highest quality uh, blending of a bicolor chip that is on any light source that's available that's bicolor. So I highly recommend the Aperture 300X for the $1,000 to the $1,500 range of LED light sources. Now, as we continue through this list, I know there's other lights that offer great value and I've reviewed other lights that I personally really enjoy, particularly for special use cases, big tube lights and there's ring lights and there's, there's all kinds of different lights, but these are just the ones that I would generally recommend uh, as a general use case light uh, in a studio environment. And that's that's just off of me using these lights. I just wanted to reiterate that. So I'd say go with a 300X if you're looking to spend about $1,100 on a light. I think it's actually right now slightly less expensive than the 300D Mark II on B&H. I saw the 300D Mark II was $1,099 and the 300X was like 20 bucks cheaper than that. Um, yeah. Oh, there's links to all these lights in the description of the this video. By the way, what'd you think of those Pro Blend shots? Pretty cool, right? All right, so anyways, now we're at the $1,500 to the $2,000 bracket, and we've got a lot of things to consider here. In this bracket, we've got the Aperture Nova at $1,699. We have the light panels Gemini 1x1, which is currently at B&H for 1686 which I know that they made like $13 cheaper than the Aperture Nova simply to compete. The Aperture 600D Pro, which is on pre-order right now for 1,890. The Lupo Super Panel Full Color 30, which is one of my personal favorites. I'm trying to remain unbiased here. And that one is $1,598. And if you wanna get the one with the lenses, that's $1,690. So it's like a hundred bucks more. Then we've got the Intellitech Mega LC, which is too big to throw up here with all this stuff. And one more panel that uh, I just found out about and is currently on the way to my studio so I can review it, which is the Elation Lighting KL Panel 300 Watt RGB WLC. And that one is $1,760. And that one is priced to compete with the Aperture Nova. And what I think is really interesting about that one is that it's got six different color chips or color channels instead of just the traditional five color chips of an RGB WW light. Aperture Nova included. So it's gonna have more color options. Now, if you're spending between $1,500 and $2,000 on a professional light, oh, and the Intellitech Mega LC is $1,700 right now. If you get it on sale at, I think, B&H and possibly on Intellitech's website. This is where it really gets down to what do you need in a light? Uh, if you're just looking for the best value light, then it's gonna be the Aperture Nova, hands down. That's the best value on a full color panel because of the amount of features that it has, uh, the build quality, just everything. It essentially completely replaced the need for the Aries Sky Panel, which is a 5,000 plus dollar light. No one would ever wanna buy one of those now if they had availability of the Aperture Nova. The only reason you would wanna buy one of those is if you needed 100 lights, you needed them available tomorrow, you could probably get your hands on Aries Sky Panels, but the Aperture Nova is, uh, it's, it's produced in limited quantities and they're hard to come by. But if, you ha if you're diving into some of the more special use cases, say you need a light that is a full color panel, that is also something that can be mounted overhead really easily, then you're gonna wanna be leaning towards the Light Panels Gemini or the Lupo Super Panel Full Color Series. Personally, I really like the Lupo Super Panel uh, Full Color Series because it's very, very, very lightweight. Uh, very silent. It's very easy to use. It has the same interface as the now inexpensive light, uh, the Action Panel Full Color. They just came out with the Kick-Ass Panel Full Color, which is like their pocket light, which has the same professional interface as their expensive lights. It's just like a little pocket light. <laughs> so I like that. I like that it's called that. And if you need something that is just like super bright and can light up a whole car, and we'll give you the softest light in the whole world without any extra diffusion uh, based on the amount of time it takes to set up, then you're gonna wanna go with the Intellitech Mega LC. With the KL panel, I'll have my opinions on that when it gets here. And 
I think that everyone is going to agree that, that the Aperture 600D Pro is probably going to be like the HMI killer. It's going to be the brightest COB light available. And if you just use white light, then that's the thing. That's going to be the white lightning. You know, that's going to be the brightest, most amazing light uh, for the price. The thing is, once you get above $1,500, you really start nailing down into these different niches. You start targeting different needs of your lights instead of just being able to turn on. They, they all target different values once you pass that price range. And with that, we're going into the $2,000 to $3,000 range. I've also uh, neglected to talk about a lot of dedicated Fresnels. Um, I, I use Fresnel attachments. The COB lights work great for me. Um, Lupo sells really cool, really great Fresnels. Intellitech sells good Fresnels. Uh, I just, I, I prefer panels personally. Uh, I really like them. So that's just something to note. Uh, between the $2,000 and $3,000 range, uh, Lupo's lights really kind of rain for me because I own several of them. Uh, the, in fact, one that I've been using for over a year now with a grid on it. Now the grid costs extra, but the Lupo full color is just like all their other lights. It's just a soft panel with the same technology. It's super bright. It's directional with the grid on it. Super convenient. I just put it on a little rolling baby stand from Impact Lighting. By the way, if you're investing in lights, then you should also start learning about grip and how to get lights overhead and how to use C-stands, C-stand safety, like sandbags and things. Uh, I use Impact sandbags because they come pre-filled with sand. You don't have to do anything other than just pay for it and then it shows up. Your UPS driver might hate you. So anyways, for the two to $3,000 range, I use the Lupo Super Panel Full Color Soft, which is $2,300 right now B&H. And then if you go with the hard one, the one with the lenses, that one is about $3,000. Easy to use, the interface dialing in a color. It was over here, I wanted to turn it on, go dark blue, get it all saturated, and then blue. Yeah, right about there. Super bright, super reliable, very lightweight. <clears throat> the super panel, full color, 60 with lenses on it. <laughs> if you need insane, crazy output, it's directional, this thing is a beast. Talk to anyone that's ever used one of Lupo's lights and they'll say the same thing, especially if you stick it on uh, CCT mode. This thing is brighter than any other light that I own. Uh, I think I measured like 30,000 lux at one meter and that's for a large two by one panel. This thing is just, it's ridiculous. And it's directional, so you don't need a grid to uh, you know direct the light spill anywhere. I'm gonna stop talking about it though. And we're gonna get on to the last couple tiers, the 3000 to $5,000 range and 5,000 plus. Now, as we get into the three to $5,000 range, we're gonna start seeing some really interesting things happen. The quality of products available to us at this range is that there is no limit on the amount of features and quality and things that you can imagine. I mean, there's, so, so check this out. This look, was a $3,200 light. It's called the Photonia Chromos. Can you imagine what this is? Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I reviewed this a little while ago. So this right here is the Photonia Chromos 5X100. It is an RGBWW Fresnel, 500 watts. It's got 100 watts to each color channel. Oh, and it has an electronic Fresnel. Uh, so it's got a motorized electronic Fresnel that changes the beam angle from 15 to 55 degrees. And you can set your own presets and you can configure the Fresnel to be its own uh, parameter in one of those presets. So you can set the presets from 15 degrees red to 55 degrees and tungsten. It's got a nice set of barn doors and a magnetic bones mount adapter as one of the accessories. Now, this light is crazy. So yeah, this is uh, by far one of the most interesting lights that was available. Now I say it was available because because Photonia is no longer uh, really business. I guess they're no longer they're no longer a thing, but you can still get your hands on something like this. It just so happens the other light that I would recommend in this price range is the Velvet Light Evo 1. Let me explain. The Velvet Evo 1 is another one of my absolute favorite lights. You can see it's V-mount powered now. It's also got its own AC power adapter. 
I highly recommend you watch my review on this light because this thing is freaking awesome. It's rainproof, it's dust proof, you can power with V-mount or with AC. It's got a mobile app that works just like Aperture's Citus Link. You can update the firmware yourself through USB. And just something about the colors that it produces are just so much more saturated than all the other colors of other panels that I've ever seen. Now the panel itself is $3,500 and then the power between the accessories and this super nice carrying bag uh, to get out the door with everything you're gonna need to use this light, it's about $4,500 after tax and shipping, five grand, just under maybe. Velvet Light and Photonia have merged as companies or one of them bought them out or something. I don't know all the details, but now there is a new light. So you can't get the Photonia Chromos 5X100 anymore, but you can get the Velvet Cosmos, which because they acquired or merged with Photonia somehow, they used all of their technology and all the their brilliant engineers, and now they are the same company. So Velvet, the most high quality panel, the most durable panel that I've ever dealt with in this, you know, in, in the history of my YouTube, has acquired one of the most interesting lights that I've ever worked with. And now they're working together and making their own awesome lights. So I gotta get one of their uh, new, redesigned pan, you know, Fresnels in here to play with because I think that's gonna be really interesting. That's the three to $5,000 price range and you're getting some really interesting innovation in that range now. Now, if you go beyond $5,000, uh, you start getting into super duper big boy lights. The sky panel is, uh, it should be retired. It's only an RGBW panel, so you have, the color quality is much less. Uh, I have a $1,200 light that I didn't even talk about. It's from Falcon Eyes. It's the Falcon Eyes DS811. It's a full color panel. It's got VMAP power. It's only RGBW. The color quality is equivalent to the Iris Sky panel. And it's only 1200 bucks. But I didn't talk about it because there's so much more value that you can get for that amount of money these days. The Sky panel is, what, $6,000? Five, five to six plus thousand dollars. It's like 50 pounds. It's, it, uh, it's just super expensive and there are better products out today. Now there is the Aerie Orbiter, which is Aerie's newest product. Uh, that is the one thing that I think is probably beyond $5,000 if you were gonna spend that much on a single light that I would consider, maybe, uh, because it is a new light, it has new technology, it has six or seven colors. Um, I got to play with it a little bit, but it's also a lot more light than most people will need. And if you don't need the full color capabilities of the Aerie Orbiter, for that amount of money, you can get several 600Ds and have far more output uh, for a far more efficient budget than if you were to spend that money on something that's Aries Orbiter. I know that there's other lights in all of these price ranges that I talked about, but I want to talk about lights that I personally had experience with. And so those that's what you get. You know, maybe you have different needs and that's fine. These are the lights that I recommend, and these are the lights that I thought were interesting in those price ranges. Now, I wanna thank Artlist for sponsoring this video, and now I'm gonna talk a little bit about why Artlist is awesome. These videos I posted on my wife's business page, they were claimed and they had, this video belongs to Epidemic Sound or whatever, and I couldn't get it removed. And I was a paying customer, I used Epidemic Sound, but uh, I didn't realize that I would have to pay extra money for the commercial licensing, even though it was a, pro a page that I owned. Uh, but if you have multiple pages, you can't flag yourself as owning multiple pages. Uh, so that's that was a real problem with Epidemic Sound, and I was extremely frustrated. And so Artlist's licensing is amazing. Once you download a song, you can use it for eternity, even if your subscription expires, which is the really interesting thing about Artlist that kind of sets them apart. After your subscription expires, you can continue to you, you can continue to use the music that you downloaded while you had an active subscription. When you download it, they email you the license, so you have something to reference even if the website disappears. You know, Artlist is awesome in that regard, and if you sign up in the next month or so, I guess in the month of December, you get an extra pack that they come out with a new one every year, so you have to be a member each year in order to get that year's you know, Christmas pack, which is like 10 gigabytes of files and LUTs and uh, overlays and transitions and things like that. Uh, some sound effects. If you sign up now, you and it's December, you know, then you can get that. It's for all new and current members. And uh, thank you, Artlist, for sponsoring the video, and thank you guys for subscribing and hitting the thumbs up and stuff. If you want to learn more about almost all the products I've got videos and reviews on. Uh, if you want to go buy them, there's links in the description where you can get them. If you are interested in how I color graded my footage, uh, I'm filming an S-Log3, S-Gamut3.cine on the Sony a7S 3 I made my own LUTs with uh, little cards that I printed off of some industrial printers. 
You can buy those LUTs for 10 bucks. And if you're interested in how I processed my audio, my sound, my speech, do it in Adobe Audition. I created a preset for that and that's also 10 bucks. So once you start spending more than a few hundred dollars on lights, your first real investment is going to want to be a C-stand because C-stands are super heavy duty. Uh, you can put almost anything on them. They hold, you know, tons of weight. They're really heavy themselves. So if you've got really cheap lights, you don't even need a sandbag, but you should still get a sandbag. Safety first. If you're gonna put a light over anyone's head, you need to get safety chains and sandbags. Um, there's a great channel, uh, Grip Tips by Dave Donaldson. He goes over pretty much all of the gear that you would need for grip and rig and equipment. Personally, I've uh, become pretty heavily invested into impact lighting, uh, impact lighting and studio equipment, which is sold exclusively by b &H Photo. I, I really like impact because they've got like all the things that Manfrotto has, uh, but just cheaper and the same quality. So anyways, get, get grip, learn about grip, uh, be safe and don't let a light fall on your head. I want to thank you guys for sticking around for this whole video. And it was a little bit longer than usual. I appreciate you and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.